OK, with our Blender model now created, it's time to texture it in Substance Painter to create something that looks a little bit like this. So let's get started. Alright, so here's our model in Blender, and what I've done is if I just spin over to the Edit tab here, I've managed to finally unwrap this. It did take me a lot longer than I expected, so I take it back about any time I say I enjoy UV unwrapping, I lied. <laughs> it's a real pain. Just a few things that I've done. I've actually made these rims here uh, slightly larger uh, than, than the sort of the average scale. If I just show you, they're pretty large compared to everything else, as is this front plate here. Uh, that's also larger, and I think I went and made the steering wheel. Um, uh, larger as well than it needs to be. Uh, the rest of the other pieces I did the average island scale and work through them. Okay, so with that all said, we've got a, a reasonably look well laid out um, UV unmap, uh, UV unwrap. Uh, potentially, I, you can probably see that I could squeeze this stuff in a bit closer and probably scale it out a touch more. And I advise you to, you know, be as be as tight as you can, spend as much time as you can with this, but uh, I've spent quite a long time with this already and I don't want to spend any more time doing it, so I'm happy with what that is. So let's export that now. So if we just uh, do uh, shift space to bring back the full view and we'll do file, uh, export, FBX, and I've actually done it once already, but let's do it here. A couple of things I'm going to do, uh, well let's actually, before, let's just cancel that first and make sure that we just tab into object mode and just make sure that that is the object that's selected. I do file, export, FBX, uh, click here, you won't have this already, okay, I've actually created a bucket seat as well that I was playing around with, but this car, go kart FBX is the one we want, we want to click selected objects, if you don't click that you'll end up with the camera and the lamp thrown in, and also this experimental apply pl uh, transform, this I believe fixes the bug in Unity with the scaling issues uh, not being applied in this really weird sort of 100 scale up thing. If you've seen any of my other videos you'll know what I'm talking about. If you know what I'm talking about just click it. And we will click export FBX and all things being equal eventually it will export it. Right so now let's go into Substance Painter and start texturing this. All right, so this is Substance Painter, uh, no, no mesh loaded up yet, but uh, I suppose I should preface this by saying that this is a paid-for application, and I know that's going to upset a lot of people, uh, particularly if, you know, if you're younger than 18 and you don't earn any money. Um, I don't like paying for applications myself. Um, you know, Blender's free, Unity's free, uh, obviously with, with caveats that if you start making a load of money. This application here, I believe, is around about $90, $100. Um, uh, so, or rather, excuse me, 90 or 100 pounds is about 120 dollars, 130 dollars for a, an indie license, and I haven't regretted buying it for one moment. It's well worth the money. If you're not very good at texturing, then as you'll see shortly, this thing makes life very easy for you. If you are thinking, oh, this, you know, okay, well, that's all well and good, but I'm still not going to do it, download the 30 day trial. Uh, and you can follow along with this and I, I, I would say you know do what you got to do uh, go and wash some cars whatever it is you need to do to just to earn yourself some money just to get this application I don't think you'll regret it uh, it's a version 2 now and I don't believe there's any um, danger of uh, you having to pay any upgrade fees anytime soon uh, I could be wrong so with my substance painter sales pitch out of the way I don't actually work for algorithmic so I'm not quite sure why I'm saying this is just only just so much as to say that it is a great app let's actually start using it so what we'll do is we'll click on File, New, and um, we don't worry about the template, we'll just click on the mesh here. I was already in that folder, so I'll just do go kart v2.fbx and click Open. Um, I'm going to go for a document resolution of 2048. You could go for 1024. The beauty of this application is that you can chop and change between them at any time. So you're, you're, um, the images you export can be 2048, 1024, 512, or, or even you can go the other extreme, 4096. Although I do think you need a pretty powerful computer to do that. I'm going to go for 2048 and click OK. And that will bring the mesh into Substance Painter. Here we go. Now, again, I don't know if it's something that I've done, but one of the nice things about Substance Painter is that you can have a background. And I just need to click on this one here. So if you go to Viewer Settings over here, and then just click Environment Opacity and bring that up. It's a bit blurred, so you can adjust the blur so you can see a bit more. And there are a bunch of uh, environment maps, which I'm not going to do now because it, so it can take a little while to load. So here's our... Um, exported FBX model okay, into into Substance Painter. Now the thing that you have to do now is actually uh, create some textures uh, so the diffuse texture, your normal map texture etc etc. It'll go through and it'll kind of evaluate how this thing's set up uh, to make some of its um, 
uh, algorithms for the for some of the textures and some of the way it applies dirt and stuff uh, later on because it do, does all this stuff for you. You don't have to do. I, I don't think I do very little painting itself. You know, very sort of very little of this sort of stuff in uh, Substance Painter. You, do, you you let all the algorithms do it for you. All of this will become clear if you've never used it before. So I'll just control Z that and I will go to texture set settings over here and click bake textures. Now uh, the output size that we want to create our textures at is 2048 by 2048. Again uh, you don't um, you can change that later on but I think it's worth doing it when you bake them to set them quite high. Uh, I've never done 4096 by 4096 it's probably my computer couldn't cope. Uh, I've got a GTX 970 and 8 gig of RAM so not bad but I don't think it's going to cut it uh, but if you've got a supercomputer why not try 4096? Uh, Anti-aliasing. This is, um, I guess, is anti-aliasing. It, it, it smooths out those edges and those rough corners so that it's working out logic for you and just kind of not not roughing up the edges too much. And I think that's all we need to change. And if I click on here, this will take a few minutes. So what I'll do is I'll click on this, uh, pause it, and then come back when it's finished. Okay, that's finished, and that took around about eight minutes. So it was a quite a lengthy process. Um, I'll just quickly show you the one. The one thing, the reason it took so long was because of this anti-aliasing. Uh, if, if you change that to two by two, it'll be a lot quicker. Or indeed, switch it off altogether, it'll be a lot quicker. But you won't get quite the same results. All right, so we've got our textures created here. Can you see them? Ambient occlusion. You recognise some of these, and some of these you're probably thinking, "What on earth is that?" Position and thickness and stuff. And it'll be some of these I'm not quite sure on myself. But position shows how high it is off the ground, I think. And the curvature map shows the angles here. If you want to do some sort of works with some of the curves, um, but I don't tend to worry about them because it does it all for you. So let's have a little, a little look. What we'll do first of all, let's texture these these wheels here. Now, uh, if if I can quickly show you if I tab in here the wheels are all using the same texture um, space on the UV so by applying it to one I'll be applying it to all four um, and that makes sense really doesn't it there's no reason why they should be uh, have their own individual UV space and it gives us you know more more um, more room to work with other bits so let's do that first of all if I just delete this uh, just click on it and uh, layer one and click delete and then what I'll do first of all is I will create a folder and I'm going to call this folder wheels and in that folder I'm going to do a um, down here on this little section here I've got this thing called smart materials and if I just do a search for tire you can see immediately it's got these things called rubber tire and I think rubber tire dirty is it yeah the one I'm going to use is rubber tire if I just grab that and just drag it into wheels something will happen the whole uh, <laughs> model will become a tire obviously that's not what we need but you can see that that's actually a very nice looking tire here uh, so but we just want it to be applied to this bit so what we need to do under this folder here is add a black mask and what that does is for those of you who don't really know about alpha masks it creates an alpha mask which is basically any any section here that is white is going to be um, applied on that UV image uh, anything that's black is ignored so all we need to do now is just say which parts of the UV model need to be considered so if we click on there and if I go over to here you can actually select the um, polygon fill that's the one and now you can see the um, if we just go to F2 actually F1, there we go, and you can see these are the pieces here. And I'm going to say which pieces I want the rubber tire applied to. So you've got choices, you can select triangles, squares, um, which is that one, mesh fill. Let's just, have to, let's just try mesh fill, see how that gets on. So if I click on there, so yeah, so that selects the whole area there, the whole sort of unselected mesh, which isn't far off what we need actually, uh, but we do need to unselect these pieces. So what I'll do is I'll, I'll flick that down to white, like that, and I'm guessing select that one, and then just start pinning these bits here I'm, I'm if you can you can drag and drop but yeah exactly that's that's the sort of thing that happens let's just uh, I'm just gonna yeah this is time consuming so the other option you've got is this UV here and that, that does the UV um, coordinates here that's so the UV if UV islands I guess you'd say so let's just do that there and the other side if it oh you see yeah, it's messed up some of these bits already so let's just go back to white and select that there we go and I think that's everything that's the wheel isn't it the other thing might be worth considering let's just press F2 again to go into full screen mode um, is if I click back onto uh, rubber tire here you can see these are the different um, layers and these effects and stuff and we'll go into a little bit more detail on what that is these smart materials are great you see it does everything for us 
If I um, quickly just click on this rubber base here, you've got two types of projection, UV projection and the other one's called triplanar. And what triplanar attempts to do is merge any seams. But I have to say, do you know where the seams are? Because I sure as heck don't and I'm pretty sure I put one at the top and one at the bottom and it's done a very good job there. So I tend to, what I tend to do is just go through these and see if there's triplanar on anything. So this one probably has. And that one's got already set to triplanar, there you go. So that's the rubber tire done there. Now the reason I put that in a folder, because I didn't have to, I could have just dragged it in and added the black mask to the rubber tire. I didn't do that because sometimes I like to paint things on, excuse me, paint things on afterwards. Uh, so I, I put it in its own folder. So we'll call that the wheels there. Good start. Okay, let's save this, make sure we're keeping this going. This does have a habit of crashing, so let's just, um, at least it does on my PC. And it's going to say, do you want to replace it? Yes, again, you won't have that. I've been doing a little bit of practice beforehand. So let's do the wheel rims. Um, these, th thank you. <laughs> Hello, there we go. Oh, the other thing, of course, is, is it's a slightly different um, mo moving uh, keystrokes and, and mouse clicks. So here you do Alt and left click, and Shift and middle mouse moves around. And I can't remember what else there is. Uh, middle mouse does nothing. I think that's it, isn't it? Those two, uh, yes. Alt and left click. What does Alt and right click do? Zoom in and out. There you go. But you can use the scroll wheel as well. Yeah. All right. Okay. Let's do that. Let's work on the uh, on the wheel rims. So let's create another folder. I just click on there and then click on this folder here. And we'll call this wheel rims. And in there, we will go onto materials now. Oh yes, we have to. <laughs> this catches me out occasionally. You think well, where's the materials? It's because I had to do a search earlier on. And let's go for something like. Silver pure. Okay. Um, oh, well, actually, what we'll need to do is create a fill layer. So let's do that now. So we'll click on wheel rims and then we'll click on this fill layer here. A uh, fill layer does exactly what it says it does, which is fill the entire area with whatever material you select here. So we will um, click on the um, fill layer and we'll drag that into wheel rims there, which is, you know, it's, but it's again, it's, uh, yeah, silver pure. Let's try that again. There we go. Okay, so the wheel rims has got silver pure in. Same rules as before apply. We need to just apply it to the just this section here. So let's go to our, let's add a black mask to the wheel rims. And we will then, uh, oh, it's, it's taking us into the polygon fill. So let's just click on this piece here and just start clicking those bits. And I think they're gonna be the same on this side. There we go. I oh, know. I tell you what, the the, out, the outer rim wasn't, but the inner rim is shared across it all. All right, we've got this rather weird little effect here. I'm not too bothered about that. That's the ambient occlusion, and the reason that's happening is because I applied it on this side. Um, yeah, I'm going to go with it. We can probably hide that later on. I'll have a little look into that. All right, now that's good and everything. It looks kind of a bit shiny. But what the power of this is now is that I can now add a normal effect to it, and this takes a little bit of a little bit of toing and froing. But again, what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to add a layer. And this is a paint layer. This is a layer I can actually just paint on like this and I can add different brush effects and whatever. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a normal. And this normal is going to be a wheel rim. Uh, so, so what we'll do is we'll go over to the right hand side. These are all the different brush settings. Again, I would advise you, if before, maybe before you come to this video even, is to check out some of the Substance Painter tutorials just to get a handle on how this thing works. I'm kind of rushing through it and you're thinking, well, you may even be able to follow what I'm doing, but it may not make a lot of sense. So please check out some of the Substance Painter tutorials uh, before you come here. They're very, very good. So the only one I, I really need to do now is, is, the, is the normal, which is this one here. And if I click on the normal, you have a whole host of options that you can apply, all these different kind of little shapes that will be applied to that uh, area of UV to make it look like it's coming out of the out of the image and actually it's not at all it's just a clever trick of the light that the, uh, the the graphics card uses so the one I found that I found was quite good was Vent 06 and if I just zoom, uh, let's just make that a little bit larger and yank up the hardness now what, I, what I thought used to happen and maybe it's because it's the colors not on but I used to think that you could see the, the stamp that you were using but now it seems to have completely disappeared and I don't know why I'm going to have to little play around with that. What I was hoping was it would show the actual vent, um, but it's not showing that. So let's let's. Just, I'm using control right mouse to to um, just to adjust the size, like so, and I'm just going to make it like that, it's just so it's the right thing in there, and then click on it, and you can see that it's applied this rather nice looking um, 
wheel room. I think it needs to be bigger. Let's just do that. Uh, by the way, a couple of things you can do as well. If you press F6, it goes into orthographic mode, and then Alt Shift and moving the mouse around kind of locks it to position. So if Alt Shift, you see it'll move it to front, and then Alt Shift it move to the side, which is quite good. Gives you a perfect angle. Let's make that a bit bigger then. But this is the problem. Now I can't see. Maybe I can go. To, let's just try to some opacities here. No, that hasn't worked. Hmm. If anybody from algorithmic can guide me, let's just try that then. It's a bit of a bit of a challenge now to guess where about to put it. That looks a little high, so I just keep control Z and kind of going until I get it right. And the reason I want to get it dead right. Ah. I have one couple more goes, and I'm just going to sod it and do that size because I know that's the right size now. Yeah, there. There, I think that's okay. And the reason I want to get it roughly right is because I know the inside there. I want to make it look like it's going into the middle. And let's be honest, it is. So let's go with that. That looks good. Let's just quickly name these. So we'll call this um, silver. Uh, we'll call this um, rim metal, and we'll call this one uh, normal uh, rim. No Rim normal, rim normal, something like that, whatever. Um, I don't think I think that's too shiny. So if I just click on this rim metal here and click on steel rough, I'm hoping all of a sudden it's completely changed that for me. Can you see how much better that looks? With one click, I'm able to try different ones out. Sci-fi artificial is probably going to look terrible. Yeah, in fact, it's black, isn't it? Steel rough. You can just change these different textures, have a play around, and see which one you like the look of. And now all of a sudden, I've got myself some wheel rims. Very little effort again. Right, let's work on the. Uh, let's just do Control S, save it up, and we will now do the bucket seat. So let's again apply the usual rules. We will add a new folder, and yeah, this is one thing I can't work out as well. Is it seems to put the folder inside the other folder, so you have to drag it and drop it out. Bucket seat, and I think if we go to Smart Materials here and I select sofa, leather sofa, that's the fella. We'll drag that in there. It's going to apply it to everything. Slowly. <laughs> That's because I'm going to, what I might do, guys. Um, this might spoil things, but it probably make. Uh, I'm going to, where I'm going with this. So I'm thinking about changing this to 1024. Let's just change it to 1024. It'll 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 run quicker. Uh, but it won't look as good. Obviously, again, we've got that same issue we have every time. So let's quickly add a black mask to the image, and then we will click on the black mask, click on UVs, and just start tapping away until we get everything selected. Make sure we've got the underside. And what have I done? I think if I don't, yeah, that's right. Let's do that. There we go. I think that's every everything. Yeah, that looks good. Um, it's quite a lot, it's oversized, isn't it? But let's quickly have a quick look at leather sofa here and start going through their layers as usual. Change to triplanar. Triplanar, is it me or is it stretching that top one? I'm not sure. Um, doesn't matter. Bilinear, high quality, yeah, whatever. Bilinear sharp. Just play around with these settings. Leather color again, change that to triplanar. Um, this one, triplanar. I'll just go through these. And that's all of them. What about the worn edges? MGF select. No. So that's okay. So I'm pretty happy with that. I might just change. To me, that looks stretched at the top, but I might be just imagining it. But it's definitely a little bit too lumpy. Do you know what I mean? The bumps are too too close together. So what we do is we go through here and we just start changing. I just double them. So I'll say six on the UV scale there. Leather color. Change that to twelve. I'm sort of guessing a bit what on earth this stuff means, and there you go. UV scale changes to two. All right, and that makes things a little bit, a little bit thinner. But that's a pretty boring-looking um, bucket seat. So let's add some cushions to it. Should be nice and easy if we just unselect that. And what we'll do is we just click here, and if we just click this layer here, this paint layer, and that's going to bring up a an alpha mat for us. We we don't want the normal this time. We just want the height, and this is going to be um, all the way up. And the alpha we'll use is a nice square shape, oh, there we go, rounded corners like that one there, rounded square and if I just bring that to the top view I can adjust the size and also and also the colour so let's have a nice red, dark red like that 
Let's do a couple of other things. Let's say what the heights there is good. Um, we don't want any rough. Uh, let's leave that alone. Let's just let's just stick this down. Uh, one one good tip by the way, if you go to viewer settings and wireframe, you can you can see the uh, the UVs and then you can just kind of center it where you want it. So we'll do that. And you can see it's applied a rather nice looking cushion at the front. Will be a little bit weird looking at the front. And then we'll do one here. Again, see this is slightly annoying. The one thing you can't do is isolate meshes on this, and that drives me mad. I'd like to be able to do that so you can hide other pieces. Um, so let's try about there, shall we? Mish bash, bosh. There. Oh, I had this earlier on, and I don't know why it's doing that. I don't know why it's doing that. So what we're going to do, if we go up to here, we can actually change the alignment to camera, and then if I click this. I think that will fix it, like so. All right, we've got kind of a, a cushiony effect there. I don't know if you like that or not, but I'm going to go with that. Um, shall I show you how to add those, all those cushions? Shall we? Cushions. I mean, if I'm honest with you, it's worth doing things like adding maybe a cushion, uh, a layer for one cushion, a layer for the other. You see, because you can obviously select and deselect these. Um, but you um, you may want to have a top and a bottom one different and stuff. So the more layers, the better, if I'm honest. Right, I won't do the... Uh, uh, I was going to put a little decal on the back and we'll come to that. Let's just keep cracking on. Let's do the um, the board here, um, which shouldn't take long at all. Let's just uh, add another layer, add another folder. It'll put it somewhere weird. Let's just grab that. Okay, and we'll call this the board or something like that. And then we will um, go to our smart materials and type wood, I think. And we can pick a nice looking wood. Let's just go for walnut, shall we? How's that looking? Yeah, I like that. I do like that. So let's quickly make sure we had a black mask. And then, yeah, UVs. Just start selecting the UVs we need. I was I was pretty brutal with the uh, chopping of this, wasn't I? This is one good thing I say, because you can use... Come on. Because <sighs> you can use triplanar. You can um, you can effectively merge a lot of this stuff. How am I doing? Is that close? I'm just imagining the front bit's not done. Oh, I can't see the front bit. Oh no, it is done. There we go. And back bit. Now yeah, that needs doing. Yeah, underside. No, I think that's all of it. Again, it'd be nice to isolate that. Okay, we'll spin through it. Just make sure. Oh gosh, there's a lot. Of, oh my god, there's loads of levels. Right, base. Change to triplanar. Oh. Um. I don't think we need to worry about any of these levels. Let's just go to here. That's actually a paint layer. Wood fibers, change that to triplanar. How's that looking? Yeah, that looks a bit better actually. Um, and sharpen is a is a brush and wood fibers change to triplanar. All right, now if we quickly spin back over here, here, you want that one? Oh, sorry, I had wireframe on this way. That looks like a pretty good board, doesn't it? Now, one thing I did last time, just to, I'll just show you how I did this effect, is I will just close that down. Um, I'll add another layer, another fill layer on top, and we'll call this dirt. I don't know if materials have dirt on dirt. No, if we just do black, black, black. Oh, I thought there wasn't a bit of black material. I don't know. It doesn't really matter. Something that's dark here. You could always just go. You could always just add a color yourself. Um, Sci-fi artificial. How about that? Um, and then what we'll do is we'll do what's called. We'll add a black mask, and then on that black mask we'll add a generator. And these generators, this is what I was talking about earlier on, allow you to um, kind of um, add algorithms. I want to say algorithmically, but that's the name of the company, algorithmic. So it will add an algorithm that will actually work out where these edges are and apply some dirt for them. So let's give that a go. Um, some good ones. Metal edgeware is quite a good one. If we just click on that, I'm hoping you can see that it's, it's giving it some dirt. And what we can now do is start tweaking this to find levels that we like the look of. And to me, this is looking a little bit not like the effect I really want. So let's quickly change that. Have another look at some of these. MG Dirt. Okay, that's quite good. I like that. And you can add some of this dirt level and um, grunge amount and stuff like that. Let's have you try playing that on. Um, and that's started to dirty it up. Can you see? And we can hopefully. Sort of tweak the grunge amount and stuff like that. I may not want it to add the all of those inputs, but there we go. Um, so what I might do is I might just remove the height. 
Yeah, you see it's making quite a difference. So I'm just going to remove the height. I'm just going to leave it like that for now. Um, you can play around with these settings. I think that's a rather um, handy looking bottle of chestnut. It's quite, quite posh, isn't it? <laughs> um, now what I'm going to do next is I'm going to make it to all, out all these chrome bars. And that shouldn't take too long. Um, what should we call them? We'll call them steel bars. So let's click on folder, a new folder. Oh, it's put it in the right place. We'll call this steel bars. And we will uh, create a fill layer, pop it into steel bars, and let's just pick something. Let's start with that steel rough. Oh, I like that already. I like that already. Yes, I do. So what we'll do is we do the uh, black mask, and we then we need to, need to start adding it. It's a bit of a laborious pro oh, but you see some of them, of course, because I've mirrored them, are... are doing it for me which is great come on did I do that one? there we go click on there have I missed oh, that's annoying isn't it <laughs> I think I've got all of the bits of the is that all of it? oh actually I'll do the um, I'll do the pedals as well make sure you've got all the pedals rich Yeah, bits missed. Again, I think I'm pretty sure I mapped these, mirrored these, although you wouldn't think so. Maybe I didn't mirror them. Last. Looks like they got unwrapped se separately, which isn't a massive deal, but especially as they probably didn't take up much texture space. Okay, that's good. So, <laughs> do you know, I, I'm, I'm tempted to go with it. Let's just call that steel basic. And now we can, we can pick what different options then you see. We can have... Um, Iron pure. Now, why have it done you? Why has it done you guys? That's be almost certainly because I accidentally selected it at some point. Oh, it's annoying. That's one of my bugbears about this. It does seem to select, but you don't want it to sometimes. Okay, let's quickly save this. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I think I preferred that to uh, steel rough. Does it steel rough? Oh no, I'm in the wrong place. There we go, steel rough. There we go. Uh, let's add a bit of colour to it as well. Let's just do um, uh, another fill layer. If you just click on that, it'll go on top. We'll just call this, I don't know, uh, roughness or something like that. And we'll only make it the colour for now. Uh, black. Uh, just make it black. But we'll do the thing where we add the um, black mask, and then to the black mask, we add a generator. And then with the generator, we'll try dirt. How's that looking? It's interesting. It's done some interesting things there. Um, it has certainly dirtied it up, hasn't it? Um, which is no bad thing. I like the way it's done it as well, actually. It's kind of added it in sort of key areas. Oh, it's added to those rims as well. So we need to... Oh, that's annoying. So, like so. There, just unselect them. Okay, so it's added some dirt to some very good places actually, but I don't like how strong it is. So let's spin back here, uh, here to dirt and just dirt levels. Maybe change the contrast just down a bit. Like you see, so just so it's not quite so. It's funny, it's subtle enough that it's. Uh, oh God, you've got to go pretty subtle, haven't you? Maybe there, something like that. Or oh my goodness, that's done an interesting job up there. Um, yeah, let's go with it. Let's go with that. Makes it look a little bit rougher, doesn't it? Now, again, I want to make sure that I've got this as triplanar. And you as triplanar. I don't see any seam issues. But I do now. Um, and that's annoying. Because I'm doing triplanar here, guys. Let's just unselect that. Yeah, so it's definitely you. Are you actually the middle though? I thought the middle was there. It's certainly not obvious at the top, is it? So I'm gonna I'm gonna ignore it. Sometimes I swear, particularly when the um UVs are very small, it struggles. Substance painter does struggles. This is where you've got to try and do maximum uh UV space for these things. Because I don't think it does very well. But that's okay. We're doing well. We're doing well. Let's uh what's left? Not much. Let's do the front board. Let's uh 
um, click on uh, new folder. Where's it going to put it? Who knows? Put it to the top. So we'll call this front board. Quickly do Control S, and we'll then drag in a. Let's just have a look at some of the smart materials. See what we got. Just see if something takes our fancy. Plastic glossy. That looks a bit too shiny, doesn't it? How about plastic matte? Let's just pull that in to see how that looks. Again, it'll apply to everything. I kind of like that. Okay, so let's um, because we're going with a red theme. So let's um, again add a black mask as usual and just start clicking on these bits. I'm not sure how many bits there are. I think. Okay. Yeah, that's all of them. I like that. Uh, let me go and find quickly go and find a, a number to put on here uh, that we'll add to the to the front board. Now let's do that. One second. Okay, so I found this uh, number 22 here. So let's um, copy that. Uh, copy uh, save image as. In fact, let's save image as. Um, if you'll be so kind as to wait for me, hurry up with. Come on. There we go. Eventually. Uh, um, go kart v2 22. It's a GIF. That's interesting because I thought it was a transparent GIF. Oh, that's annoying. Um, let's just see if uh, let's just see if Substance Painter is happy with GIFs. Well, I've got 22L3. So what you can then do is just drag this in. We we'll just import to Project Go Kart V2. There it is. And let's very quickly try this out. I'll be impressed if it does does use GIFs. We can uh, remove the alpha. Um, I'm just very quickly doing this, guys. Uh, the base color is the what's it called? 223L. Sometimes it's in weird places. It should be there. It's in alphas at the minute. I don't really want it in alphas. I'm not sure if it's worked out that it needs to be. Okay, so let's quickly move over to textures and we'll drag that in again. It might not be working. Sorry if this this is a pain. This. And then we'll just click on base color. There it is. It has worked. Okay, this is very pro. Oh wow, guys, this has actually worked. Um, <laughs> I know, surprising, right? And we need to go to uh, tangent wrap so that it does it in the right place. Make it a bit smaller. Just kind of click there. And uh, oh, and the reason it's done that is because I need to remove the height. There we go. Uh, and click on there. And let's put 22 on for us. Uh, not loving it, but it has put it on there, <laughs> which makes for an interesting. Yeah, maybe even we we'll just call that number. Might even change that later on. I, you know, I, yeah, I encourage you to go and have a little look. Well, some things you can do here. Maybe we just try a few things. Let's try linear dodge. Oh no, no, that's no good. Uh, is it linear burn? Where's burn? Burn, 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 burn. Where are you burn? Color burn. Ooh, well, that's that's better straight away, isn't it? Uh, and what you can do is. Um, just maybe adjust that until you find something that you like the look of. But I kind of that's a bit better already. Well, 22. So people are going to see that and go, "Oh, here comes 22." Right. How? I mean, how quick is this? You know, I'm, uh, maybe you think this is taking too long, but for me, I'm I'm flying and at any point. I can change any of this stuff. Great stuff. Right. Let's um, hide you and go for the steering wheel. This shouldn't take long again. So we'll add a folder. Just pop that in and call it steering wheel. Um, I think what I might do, let's just find some leather. What leather options have we got here? Leather fan, leather stylized. Let's just have a little look at that. Oh, where's that gone? Oh, yeah, that's fine. Okay, it hasn't. It's done something very weird. So I'm going to Control Z that. I'm going to try leather wrap. Okay, that looks a bit better. Um, it's showing the seams. Let's see if we can fix that. But first of all, let's add a black mask and make sure that we click on these pieces. Look at that. That can only mean, guys, that I haven't unwrapped it properly. Oh, sugar. That means, let's just go and have a look at our UV map, shall we? Have I still got Blender loaded? Yes, I have. Let's just click on you. L, L. L, L. Well, oh, they are overlapping, look. If I had the strength, I'd go back and change them. Look at that. Just G on the X, let's pull it out. 
But it needs to be like that. Hey. <sighs> so that's going to look weird. But I'm not going to I'm not going to change it now. You guys can have a play around with that at a later stage. Let's just quickly go through the leather weathered. Um yeah, that's already triplanar. That's triplanar. That's UV projection. Let's change that to triplanar. And leather weathered. Yes, okay. So we're going to go with that. Leather weathered. I think I'm going to change the scale on this. Let's just go again to the bottom. This is the leather itself. Let's change that to 10. That's better. Uh, leather damages. Again, change that to 2 maybe. Uh, that's it. Alright. Yeah. Mm. Mm. Sorry. Not thrilled by that. Not thrilled at all. Um, the next thing you can do with this is a little. We can we can get a little go to town on this. So let's let's do it quickly. Let's do it quickly. Let's go for the. We'll we'll have another section called steering wheel middle or something. Did I click that? Hello. Oh, is it putting it somewhere weird? Yes, it, now it's putting it weird, not even telling me they're there. Great. Let's put that up there. So we'll call this steering wheel middle. And we will, um, as always, let's just have a quick look at the smart materials. Latex black. So pull that in. That, to me, to be honest with you, that looks better on these chunks, doesn't it? I think. So let's let's rename this to steering wheel um arcs. Supports. <laughs> I don't know. Uh and we'll just quickly add a black mask to that. And then as usual, click on UVs and just start pinging these guys. Now I didn't want you to do you. Okay, that's alright. Just no, I didn't want to do those, did I? So we'll just go move our way around, selecting everything. It's got a kind of a metallic look. I'll sorry, and I'll unselect that middle bit. Ah. So we need to do that one. Nope. That one. <laughs> I'll get there. Come on. Nearly there. Pretty sure the back is untouched. Always a bit there. Look. Okay. So we'll have those pieces as the as the outer rims, and then in the middle, I'm sort of winging it here, guys. Well, I've been winging it all the way, right? Um, you, we will go for a uh, another folder, and we'll call this uh, steering wheel middle, and then there. Let's have a little look and see what we can do. I want to do something funky here. Let's try steel scratches, see how that looks for starters. Let's just try a few things and so let's um add a black mask and then just start selecting these pieces. I'm not really thrilled with this though. But we can play around, you see, this is the thing. We can diff pick different options now. In fact, we can even tinker with the material itself. So are we happy with that? Let's do the back as well. There, that's that. Okay, so if we go into this steel scratch, we could potentially go steel base look. Um, just make sure we've had this as triplane. Oh no, that's not worked. Now forget try plane then. UV projection. Um where are we? So that's still base. And then we'll try dirt. Base colour. We can darken this down, you see. Well that's no. I'm not liking that one. Sorry. I'm gonna delete it. And I'm gonna pick something else. I'm gonna try steel gun. Just drag that into steel middle there. Yeah, yeah, that looks good because it's kind of got that kind of rustic look to it. Let's add a let's add a normal into the middle as well. So let's quickly click on here, click on um, a fill, and then we'll just find ourselves 
uh, quickly click on here, click on normal, find ourselves something that we like the look of. Um, again, you can you can play around with this. This is the great thing. You can uh, you can try different things and see what's good. I mean, for instance, let's try that. Uh, no alpha, that's right. It's huge at the minute. So let's zoom that down. Start getting the size right. Oh, that drives me mad, that circle. Uh, sorry, it's applying the colour. We don't want that. That's no good. Try a few more things. That one, for instance. I think what we can do with the alpha actually is we can go for the circle one here because because we're going for a circular normal stamp. If it wasn't a circular normal stamp, we wouldn't get away with it. But I'm just trying to find the circle. I can never find it. Um, let's see, ellipse. That one? It could be that one. Yes, that's it. So now we can do this at least. Click on that. How's that look? Weird, but not terrible. It's done something weird here, hasn't it? So let's quickly see if we can clean that up uh, by painting it with um, colour. Oh, I tell you, we can do. You can actually use the erase tool. Let's just see how this goes. Oh no, make it a lot smaller, obviously. Just erase some of those dots. There we go. Uh, what's pretty clear is that I haven't used enough UV space for the steering wheel. Uh, on balance, let's quick spin back here. If I just click on that and press L, yeah, it's not huge. It's not not tiny. But it's not huge either, so maybe I should have used something bigger. But that's okay. That's a, that's a passable. That's a passable steering wheel. Again, you can do so much better than me. Also, something there. Maybe that's part of the thing. Um, let's add some dirt to this uh, front board. I've just seen that. I know I'm uh, flipping around here. So let's just click on. Let's get rid of everything else. I'll add another layer here. Uh, fill there, and it's gonna it's gonna go above plastic mats. So let's click on that and then just do fill layer of which will be black we'll just make it color we'll just make it color black for now and then we will um, where's it gone this one right so we'll call this dirt and we can start playing around by adding a black mask and adding a generator to the black mask one thing by the way you can do as well you can do these smart masks so it's worth having a little look at these and see if anything like dust subtle you just drag that in there it's very bloody subtle I can't see it at all um, is it on? it is isn't it? gosh that's not very subtle at all let's have a quick look see if we can well that's rubbish so <laughs> let's just get rid of that um, and try a different one um, Dust stained. That's a bit better. That's hardly hammering it. So let's quickly just do a generator then. Add generator. Um, Selected generator. MG dirt. That's better. That's better. That looks a lot better, doesn't it? That's a. <laughs> it really is dirtying up these sections here. I mean, like I say, you can go through and you can actually change this to be a lot less dirty. But maybe that's a good thing. It actually, kind of works, doesn't it? Because you, that's what that probably would get dirty with the wheels right there. Hmm, it's done a few things for me that uh, I wasn't expecting, but I'm also very pleased with. So, yeah, let's go with that. Let's keep that as it is. Um, all that's left then is the pedals, and they're going to take a few seconds. So let's just quickly uh, add a new folder. Where's it? Put it there. We'll spin it right to the top. Click on pedals. Pedals. And we will just drag any old... Let's just quickly go to smart materials. I'm gonna I'm gonna pick something that's like plastic fake. There we go. Pop that into pedals. Wait a few seconds. I'm not I'm not horrified by that, so I'm actually gonna just quickly click add black mask. Start selecting these pieces. I think I was pretty brutal with the UV unwrapping of this as well. It doesn't, it doesn't take up a lot of space. I may be able to do um, that. Thinking about it, yeah. Let's do this one. I think that's done everything, hasn't it? There we go. Um, and what I'll do uh, again, this is a problem because of my. Let's go to the top view. Yeah, it's not going to quite let me. Let's go to F5 perspective mode. All right, and then we can get a, uh, a fill layer, uh, paint layer. Excuse me, and then. Very quickly, we'll call this grips or something like that. Grips. 
Uh, get rid of the alpha. It was just looking at the the normal here, although I don't see one. I did a fill layer, did I? Excuse me. I wanted the paint layer. Paint layer. The paint layer. Ah, am I in some funky mode? Yes, I need to be in paint mode. I get confused. Um, so we want a grip. So we'll just pick something that they're quite good. Um, let's pick. Oh, I don't know. Oh, there we go. Vent 07 is exactly what we're in. Now, why has it done a circular alpha like that? I'm absolutely perplexed by this. I'm going to turn colour off as well. Let's just change the alpha to a square then. Yeah, maybe that. And then. That's worked. Let's just make it a bit bigger. Oh, that's good. Okay. Again, you can kind of see that it's not beautiful because of the um, texture. Although I am still on 1024, aren't I? So let's do this. You'll like this. Let's just try this. And let's just drag it into place. In fact, that might help the steering wheel as well, mightn't it? And just click there. We've got ourselves some grips on the pedals. And what I'll do, yeah, let's just quickly do Control S. Always worth doing Control S before you save, before you change it to 2048. Let's just do this. Yeah, I'd forgotten that I had another 2048. Might take a few seconds. In fact, I'll go ahead and pause it. Okay, well, this is embarrassing. I appear to be suffering from performance issues. I have actually tried a number of times to uh, reload this image at 2048, and my PC does not seem to have the capacity for it. This is weird because I thought it did. Um, I must admit, I think this is probably as far as I've gone with this application. All is not lost. You can still export at 2048, but what I don't seem to be able to do is view them at 2048 here. Every time I try, it gets so far and then blows up. I've tried a few different ways around it, but no, it doesn't seem to be able to cope with it. So what we will do is let's just save this up now. Uh, let's let's show you how to export these textures. Oh gosh, it's going to go slow again. There we go. Um, it Maybe my PC needs a reboot, I'm not sure. Uh, maybe the driver's got its knickers in a twist. Um, by driver, I mean graphics driver, not go-kart driver. Okay, so let's let's export this now. I think I'm pretty happy with every, everything. That dirt is too strong. It looks good in some places and not in others. Um, on the board, no, I don't know. What do you think? Let me just show you how to get rid of it. Anyway, let me just show you how how to fix it, or at least make it look a bit better. If I find that board, I think I just called it board, didn't I? There. And what you can do here is you can simply click on the layers and choose the basic. It's already selected. You can choose which ones you want to change. Uh, in this case, we do want to change the base color, and we can click on this here. Uh, no, I'm sorry. We need to click on the dirt, don't we? And that's the one we need to change the base color for. And we can just drag this down or up, see, to make it completely disappear. Uh, so you might want to try something a little little less brutal and again you can do the old linear dodge maybe no uh, burn color burn that's it and then just try and pick up try and pick a value that maybe you, you suits you a bit more um, really is noticeable under there isn't it is that the same thing no it's not the same I wonder which one that is I don't know. I'm, I'm beyond caring at the moment. <laughs> so let's just try something like that. What, what did I go for? Board. I went for 64. Let's just tweak that up a touch. I don't know. I'll let you decide if you think that's good enough. Press escape there. All right, so we're happy. Um, I'm, I'm liking this one more than most of my efforts so far. So I particularly like this board now. I think this looks really cool, doesn't it? It really does look like something that's been thrown together uh, piecemeal, which is the look I was going for. Um, one thing I was going to do was add a decal on the back, and if anybody's interested, I can show you how to do that. But I'm guessing you probably know based on the way we stamped 22 there. Um, we can um, we can tweak around with that. Um, so let's export this. That's the way we're going to do that. Is we're going to click on File, Export Textures. Now there's a couple of things I have to do. Number one, I have to select the folder, and I want it to be in the uh, Go Kart V2 folder. Uh, here we go. That's fine. Select that folder. Um, we need to go over to the configuration here. I'm pretty convinced that if I go to standard metallic, which is this one, it's going to be missing. No, it's not. You're, you will be missing this height here. Okay, so I'm just going to remove that. You, what you'll probably see is these ones here. Uh, I'll, what you, the way to do it is just click on this and it'll create a copy and then just call that 
height because we want to bring the height channel as well because we're going to bring the height channel into unity uh, we want to click left click that and do clear channel and then find the height here and just drag it in and I think it is the gray channel all right, that's going to create a height map. So we're going to have five files, an Ambedia transparency, metallic smoothness, a normal emission. If there's a way I could unselect that, because we don't use it, um, we can keep it there. It'll just throw an error saying that there's no emissions on this. All right, so now if we go back over to export and choose our configuration, we want the Unity 5 standard metallic, which was the one we just changed. And you'll see that there are five files. And if we click on export, oh, hang on. Yeah, say so, okay, that's fine. Uh, that has done 1024 by 1024. Let's quickly control S this and we'll do that again. The thing I didn't do was change it to 208 by 2048. You see, so you can do that here. It takes a bit longer, but I don't think it's going to run out of memory. Make sure it's PNG, 8 bit is fine. And click on export again. This will take a little bit longer, I hope. Probably four times longer. All right, well that finished again. I had some problems. Um, it, it does. I think I'm going to need to reboot my PC, but I'm pleased to say that I did manage to eventually create those uh, files. Um, I seem to. I, I've basically, in order to get things working, I've been uh, closing every possible folder down. Uh, you'll see these guys here. Um, where are we? Here they are. These are the PNG files that's just been created here. Um, they're large, aren't they? They're quite large. And one thing I'd just like to show you. Um, is a very very useful website called Compress PNG. Uh, so if I just type Compress PNG in here, I think that'll do it. There we go. What you can actually do with this, and this is a little great little website, is you can just drag and drop these guys in here. Let's make sure I've got the four files. There we go. Pop them in there. It's going to upload them first of all. And what this will do is it will compress them for you uh, losslessly. There won't be any surprises. You won't get any uh, weird changes to the actual images because these are PNGs. They're, they're lossless anyway, uh, so it's pretty quick. Um, and you can see that it's actually reducing the file size by 63% on the. Um, I don't know which one's which actually. Um, we'll find out in a minute. I'll let these guys finish and then I'll uh, and then I will um, uh, uh, un unpause the video. One second. Okay, those are finished. And you can see the, the, the difference it's made. I mean, with the albedo one there, I'm pretty sure I see albedo. I think that might be the height map. I'm not sure. That's the normals. Um, you can see it's made a big old difference. So if you just click on download all, um, it'll pop it in a zip file for you. And then what I tend to do is just drag and drop those into the same folder because it'll put min next to them. Can you see there? So what I can now do is just click on the regular PNG files. Uh, that one and that one and confidently delete them I believe uh, da, da, da. yeah okay so we've actually seriously reduced the size which I think will help unity uh, in terms of its memory because these files are a lot smaller now. and these are 2048 by 2048 as well um, I'm having real struggles with that right now but that's a useful website compresspng.com highly recommended all right guys so take a look at that if you get a chance um, and you want to compress your pngs okay let's close that guy down so you don't see that you don't see my jobs i think we are done today i'm going to stop there now the next thing we're going to do is we're going to load this into unity i hope that was useful i hope you found this um, a useful video please comment like and subscribe i love all that stuff um but feel free not to i'm, I'm also enjoying uh, uh, doing this. This is probably one of my favourite projects so far. So the next one we'll import this into Unity. There's something we're going to need to do and that is actually get these, these these two wheels and the steering wheel separated out so that we can control them in Unity. At the minute this is one big object and I don't think we're going to be able to get those meshes easily. So we'll, we'll, we'll work on that. That shouldn't be too difficult. I'll have a little play uh, and get that working for you. But thanks again guys. I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Bye bye.